Hi, my name's Olivia, I'm a medical student here in the UK, and welcome to my channel, The Dyslexic Medic. As my channel name suggests, I have dyslexia, so I thought today I'd talk a bit about how it affects me and my studies. As a disclaimer, this is my personal story, so if you think you have dyslexia or another learning difficulty, go and speak to your university about it to get formally tested. So a brief summary of my dyslexia journey. I had problems with spelling and interpreting what words mean for as long as I can remember. When I was in year 11, I went through some preliminary tests. Let's say my spelling age was about that of an 11 year old, but all of my other amateurs were completely normal for my age and my grades weren't suffering. So they just said, no, you don't have dyslexia and left it at that. I then sort of left on the back burner for several years until I came to university. In fact, several years sort of into my university degree where I then got formally tested and I was diagnosed when I was age 20. It actually isn't that uncommon to be diagnosed later, especially when you've been getting good grades and being able to cope with schoolwork. As I said, dyslexia doesn't affect your intelligence and so grades and tests aren't necessarily the best measure of general intelligence either, which is why it can be quite inaccurate. So what's happened since then? Well, since then I now have 25% extra time and I get a government grant to sort of provide some of the equipment I need to help me out. The biggest thing for me has actually been the extra time. It's really helped me in exams and I've actually seen my grades go up since I've been given it, which obviously has quite a big impact on me and sort of future jobs when I qualify. So I can say for me, it's really worked. How does it affect me day to day? Well, as I've transitioned through lectures to the wards, how it's affected me has changed. I found lectures harder than being on the wards because part of my dyslexia is that it affects my attention span. So if a lecturer doesn't sort of grab my interest or if lectures go on for a very long period of time, I find it very difficult to concentrate. Obviously, I know this is very similar for lots of people, whether they have dyslexia or not. So I can't really tell if that's my dyslexia or whether that's just me because I don't know what it's like to be without dyslexia. I prefer to handwrite notes as I find it gets into my brain better. I'm not distracted by everything that comes along with using a laptop and it means I can structure my notes in the way that I want to. Obviously this is slightly harder in lectures, especially with the pace some of them go at, but what I found for myself, which is useful, is writing down what the lecturer has been saying and then filling in the gaps from the slides afterwards. Often I will even sort of go down and count the number of book points and number of lines, then count on my page how many lines I need to leave, leave that gap and write sort of what slide number we're on so that I can go back afterwards and fill in those blanks in my notes, which means I don't have to rewrite all of my notes but then also means I'm not trying to like scramble to catch up on everything. Well, you know, you could write your notes prior to lectures, but I've never done that. It probably would have helped, but it's one of those things. Being in lectures is very different to being on placement. I much prefer being on placement. I find it much easier to learn with seeing patients and hearing things and doing things. However, the thing I find hardest to do with my dyslexia on placement, not just placement itself, is writing more drum notes. Apart from the fact you're trying to write at breakneck speed, ascertaining what is necessary and not necessary for you to write down, add that with difficulty in spelling, especially simple words like asthma or more complex words, and it becomes really difficult and very stressful. I actually spoke to one of the registrars about this and she gave me some really good advice. She said, notes are notes. As long as people get the general idea of what's going on, that's fine, you can always go back later to correct any words you feel like you haven't spelled correctly. It's not like you're writing a letter to someone, it doesn't have to be perfect. I personally think it's a great piece of advice. You don't hear it's okay not to be perfect very often in medicine, or at least I haven't. Whether you're dyslexic or non-dyslexic, it's good to know that it's okay not to be perfect when starting out, because you're not going to be perfect when starting out. There's a reason why your notes are countersigned by a more senior member of the team. There's a reason why you are supervised and people watch you doing things before you go off and do it by yourself or sort of in a less supervised way. My biggest piece of advice for this is to practice and spend as much time doing the thing you're struggling on as possible. Also having a format, especially for ward round notes, really helps. I write my revision notes in a very similar way to which I write my ward round notes. Now I have this format, I find it much easier just to concentrate on what's going on and to make sure I have all the necessary information down that I need for that day and for that patient. I know that my spelling will never be perfect or that I need to triple check numbers because my brain switches them around. 
and that's okay. I know that I need to take that extra bit of time to double check and triple check to make sure I've got everything down right. I'm not worried about turning around and saying to someone, actually, I have dyslexia, I just need a bit more time. What are they going to say to that? Anyway, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. Stay safe, wash your hands. Bye for now.